All right, um, we're gonna start it. So welcome to the finale of the Luxia Challenge, uh, season one. Uh, thank you all for competing. Um, it's been a wild form of journey. We've seen a wide variety of solutions and a heck of a lot of different discussion and strategies from rule-based solutions, imitation learning, reinforcement learning, and whatnot. But we're going to just go through a quick recap first, um, reflecting on our achievements this season. Before we start going into our guest speakers, um, including uh, representatives from Quanco, one of our sponsors, and uh, one of our special guests today, which is Team Tobergay, they'll be presenting uh, at the very end of the presentation, um, something you can look forward to. And then we'll start talking about uh, our finalists and prize winners, and also give you guys a sneak peek into season two. So first up, um, we would like to thank um, basically, everyone who's been competing, um, we've had a whopping, um, we've ran and served 22,000 something submissions and ran 8.5 million plus matches. This is probably the most number of matches I've ever seen a competition run <laughs> in a four month period. Um, and without you guys, obviously, we couldn't have run this much. Um, and we've seen a wide variety of solutions as well here, but, um, yeah, a crazy number of matches. Uh, what's the next part? Um, we also like to thank the number of people who competed. Um, you guys have made this year basically probably one of the most uh, popular programming competitions this year with 1,186 competing teams and 1,464 unique competitors. So thank you guys again <laughs> for competing. Um, and we've also seen like a wide variety of solutions. Um, in particular, we've seen that our top two solutions this year from teams are all, is all you need and Tober Gate have been reinforcement learning, uh, followed by many, many uh, imitation learning solutions, and then followed by some rule-based solutions. Kudos to Team Tiga for keeping up probably the best rule-based solution we've seen um, for the whole, ent whole entire tournament. Um, and we also present some kind of interesting statistics. Uh, interestingly, uh, Team Isle is all you need is able to achieve building 619 cities in one game all of a sudden. Um, if you want to find that match ID, you can search the Kaggle forums. Um, we're going to move on. But we also like to thank um, all our contributors on GitHub. We had about 20 plus open source contributors across our GitHub repos and across um, some of the kind of spin-offs. Uh, we've also had 100 plus public notebooks targeting rule-based solutions, reinforcement learning, imitation learning, and whatnot. And without all these solutions and contributors, I don't think we could have had a better competition. Uh, without you guys, we've had, had probably so many more bugs, but you guys have given us a lot of food for thought for how to design the next season and how to build the next season properly. Um, and with all your contributions, we probably have the most popular GitHub repo now with about 900 plus stars on repo on our GitHub. So thank you guys again for that. Um, so again, Quanco just wanted to recognize the top 10 teams and top 10 individuals. So this is including Toe Brigade, RLs I Need, um, Team Dirit, I'm not gonna name all of them, but congratulations to you guys and congratulations to the top 10 individual teams. Uh, an amazing achievement and in an incredibly difficult competition, potentially one of the most complex ones on the Kaggle platform yet. Um, for more information, um, you guys, someone from Kaggle, we'll, we'll talk about information later, but someone from Kaggle will send you guys a form to fill out if you'd like to get uh, receive merchandise from Quanko. They'll be sending out prizes along with this prize. Uh, we'd like to also congratulate our four percent winners. So month one, we had teams uh, Toe Brigade and Bowel for each. Toe Brigade today being represented by Isaiah here today. Uh, month two, we had teams TBD. Uh, as people like to joke, apparently it stands for Toe Brigade Destroyer and Team Tigga. Uh, month three, RL is all you need, Love Deluxe. And month four, Team Dura and Team Iron Bar. Uh, congratulations to you guys for uh, working on your solutions super early and submitting them and topping this, uh, the leaderboard every single month. Um, again, you guys are also entitled to a prize from us, um, and again, you guys will receive a form later. Um, and we will also like to congratulate no, uh, no Sound, Team No Sound, for their strategy report. Um, they wrote an incredibly concise, insightful report, report on the imitation learning method, which also garnered a lot of discussion and pushed up the skill ratings of many other teams. So we like to congratulate them for their efforts and their contributions, not only in their own report, but also the amount of um, uh, if, uh, the amount of impact it's generated across the entire Kaggle leaderboard. Uh, lastly, we'd just like to finally congratulate um, all our uh, monetary prize winners. This is our top five teams. So first place goes to Toe Brigade. Second place, RL is all you need. Third place, Team Skyramp. Fourth place, Team Durette. And fifth place, Team Iron Bar. 
congratulations once again uh kaggle will be in touch with you guys for how you guys can receive your monetary prize um and now we're gonna have a quick presentation from uh team tow brigade as they'll let you take it over from here hello uh thanks for having me i'm isaiah from team toad brigade uh and i thought i'd start just by going over briefly why we picked the name toad brigade we thought the warriors or the workers looked like toad from mario and uh the theme with all the little swarms of guys moving around seemed like vaguely militaristic uh so we were trying to come up with a pun on that uh, we were we had some game of thrones some game of thrones names that we were thinking about like the night's watch or something but uh we found out that toad brigade was a real thing from super mario galaxy and we thought it was a really cute name and so that was the team name we ended up playing with anyhow uh the methods that we uh went out that we started with uh we thought that some of us would work on rules-based methods and some of us would work on reinforcement learning. Um, we expected the rules-based methods to outperform the reinforcement learning ones because that was how things had gone uh, last year in a in the Halite competition. And the Halite competition was, um, I mean, there were some differences, but on the on balance, it was a pretty similar set of mechanics and slightly simpler rules. And so we thought that oh, the rules based method rules based methods will overperform. Uh, but we we were very incorrect. Um, <laughs> the reinforcement learning was what we ended up working on, and that's what I what I worked on mostly. Um, and it started it started slow, which is to be expected. It didn't really learn anything. Um, except with a shaped reward. And so I was working on a shaped reward and trying to, you know, figure out some way of engineering. Oh, let's give it a point for building a city and half a point for building a worker and um, those sorts of things. But the strategies as it was learning, even with those, uh, even with the human knowledge informed reward, were still pretty mediocre. But it was exciting because it was learning something like I could see, oh, it's it's building some cities and the cities are building units. And, and so it was exciting to see it do anything. Um, it, that's how reinforcement learning tends to be. It often does nothing and then it does something and you're like, oh, my gosh, it's learned. Um, and actually, during the first month, uh, I thought the learn policy was even worse than it was because it kept letting all its cities die. And so I just kept restarting training with different parameters and architectures. I was like, man, this thing can't even learn to like fuel a single city. Uh, but then kudos to uh, Nikolai D, um, who published a strategy that on the top of the leaderboard in the first month, um, and it was a, just a total destroy all the resources, don't preserve your cities at all, devastation strategy. And I was like, oh wait, this works? Like, is the agent actually onto something? Um, and so then I was like, all right, so now now I'll just let it train. I don't care that it's doing things that I think are weird. I'll just see what happens. Um, and things started working as it started training on just the sparse sort of win loss reward. Um, and it started winning. And for those who don't know reinforcement learning, the idea is that you have this agent interacting with the game over and over and it takes actions and then it gets rewards. And so the sort of purest reward is, oh, did it win or lose? But it's very hard to learn which actions were good in a 360 turn game just from winning or losing. But um, it, it did. And I added a sort of teacher network as well to kind of help stabilize training. A lot of these details you can see in our write up on the Kaggle forums. Uh, and once I did that, it went from the top 10 agent to the top agent in a couple of days and went pretty, continued, continued performing well thereafter. Um, and after the first sprint, parameters changed. So I restarted training uh, and tuned some hyperparameters. And that's when things really kind of kicked into gear. At that point, agents started beating previous best agents like 90 plus percent of the time. And then agent three would beat agent two 90 plus percent of the time and agent four would beat agent three. And so that was the most exciting time when agent was just growing explosively. Um, and yeah, very, some very, we had some very strong agents internally, even as of the end of what would that have been? like late September, early October. Um, yeah, the training training was good. Um, and I made some modifications to the neural network architecture or the loss function. 
but for the most part, the basic training procedure remains the same over the course of the competition. Uh, and again, I won't go into too many details, but you can find them on the in our write-up. Um, things that I really liked about our approach were having a single network control all the entire fleet of units, rather than having um, rather than having an individual network control each unit. I think the architecture we had really helped um, really helped training run more smoothly and helped the units work together harmoniously and synchronously in a way that they might not have. Um, and I also would have liked to add league training of some sort where we train many different agents, each trying to do something different and kind of exploit each other like they did in Alpha Star, but I didn't have nearly enough com computational capacity to do that. So maybe next time. Uh, overall, my thoughts on Lux season one are really positive. I thought it was a really interesting, strategically complex game. I really liked the sort of macro level gameplay where you have to pick which resources to uh, to go after combined with the micro level gameplay of, oh, how do I defend this resource, uh, this resource node with my two units against their three units? Like what's, what's the best combination of moves? And I was uh, very happy to see that the agent was able to learn all that itself. Um, and I also really liked procedural, I'll just hit a couple bullet points here. Procedurally generated maps was really cool. Um, the different resource to mining rate to fuel conversion rate, uh, that kind of equilibrium was really interesting about how the different resources had different uh, utility at different points in the game. I liked the exponential growth kind of factor where, oh, as you mine more, then you get more cities that build more units that build more cities, like, uh, like that kind of gameplay, video game like gameplay loop is really fun. Um, and of course, the trade offs are the most interesting part to me between faster growth versus resource conservation. Uh, the only thing that I would that I would change, of course, given hindsight, never could have known this. Um, ahead of time is I wish carts were more viable. I think I'm not alone in this, uh, but it, it would, I was so fascinated. I was like, oh my gosh, like there are all these different unit types I can build. Uh, and the reinforcement learning agent was allowed to build carts, but it never figured out how to use them. And I personally also did not figure out how to use them, but um, yeah, that's, that's really the only thing I would change overall. I think the competition went really well. Huge congrats to the Lux AI team for running such a successful first competition. And thanks, of course, to everyone else as well on Kaggle and on Discord, all the competitors. It's been a great competition and I'm looking forward to season two. Yeah, thank you, Isaiah and Team Togre uh, Brigade for the presentation. Uh, we also likewise agree, uh, we wish cards could have been used more. In fact, I aggregated that approximately, we've mentioned cards about 86 times across Kaggle forums, Discord, and our Twitch streams just to try to get more people to use them. Um, but unfortunately, they turned out not to be a great idea, but always next time. Um, with that, we're gonna start talking about season two. Um, so this is something really exciting. Um, season one is our first season we've ever ran. So we had a lot of bumps on there. Um, and I'll start off first. Um, we will for sure be running a season two. However, the biggest thing that we don't know yet is whether we'll be running on the Calgo platform or not. That has yet to be confirmed. Unfortunately, we probably won't be able to confirm this for another month or two. But the thing that we can confirm that is a season two will run. Um, in the event that we don't run on Kaggle, what will happen is that we'll run on our own platform, which will be faster, uh, likely. And the positive side of that is that it will be faster, uh, will be quite responsive to feature requests, um, and probably be a nicer overall experience uh, minus the Kaggle medals, I guess. I guess. Um, so that's kind of the first part. Um, the second part um, about season two that we're tackling is basically tackling f four of the biggest complaints, basically. Um, so one of the biggest complaints is uh, super low match rates. Um, if you compare our competition with past competitions um, of kind of like AI programming competitions such as Halite, um, or even other ones that are even older, such as the Google AI challenge back in like 2012 or something, the match rates there were great. Um, you played about like 100 matches in like a day or something. Um, and Kaggle, it seems to be about 20 a day, which is quite slow. Um, so this is something that's been uh, uh, constantly kind of a thorn in the competition. We wish we could have improved, but we couldn't change much about it this year. Um, but we're definitely looking ways to um, improve that next year, uh, whether it's being limited the number of active submissions to um, not 200, but like you can only have like 10 or five active at a time, to somehow uh, balancing the match rates across the uh, robots accordingly. Um, 
So yeah, uh, things like that. Another big complaint uh, we've also received, um, the second biggest one is basically just an inaccurate ranking system. This one, I actually don't know completely what we're going to plan, we're planning to do, but there have been some great ideas suggested. Um, in particular, Team No Sound suggested a really uh, intuitive, um, not exactly innovative, but really nice way of computing um, an accurate ranking system using what's more or less known as a whole history ranking system. In particular, if you're interested in statistics, it's called a Bradley Terry model. You can take a look into his Kaggle forum post about that. I'm not sure if we're going to consider that, but I'll push Kaggle to consider it. Um, so we have that in, uh, at hand. Um, another big issue that a lot of people had is just the relatively slow engine, uh, especially for non-Python competitors who didn't have access to the Python gym or something. Um, our own engine was just kind of slow. There was a lot of type checks, there was a lot of slow parts in it that are written, and a lot of kind of mechanics to try to implement it. But just to make sure we implement it fairly, um, we have to use super slow algorithms for that. Um, so we're going to be targeting that, and one of the ways we're targeting it is that um, is that we're switching completely from our old TypeScript backend to a more uh, Python embedded backend. Um, so it's super important because um, reinforcement learning agents, especially a lot of machine learning agents, uh, will be using most likely Python. Um, there are a couple other languages, but the majority of competitors are Python, and with a Python-based engine, you can easily improve the speed of uh, trajectory calculation. Uh, collection and match running and simulation. Um, so we're going to be working towards using that. And if you're interested in details, we're going to be using, um, we're going to be making an environment based off something called Petting Zoo. Um, you can search that online. Um, and I think the last one, this is probably was less complained about, but it has been an issue um, at the start of the competition, which is the visualizer. While super cool, and I think we probably have one of the best um, aesthetics for a visualizer, is quite slow, unfortunately, and can just kind of chew to computing resources. So we're going to look at ways so we can still make it aesthetic, but lower the amount of compute overhead um, to run and watch a single replay. So these are basically some of the main um, things we're going to be working on. In addition to a lot of other things we're working on, such as improving tooling, uh, we're going to be making the engine better. We're going to be making that tournament tool a lot of people like using a lot better. Um, we're going to try to make the starter kits better. Um, we realized that this season our C++ starter kit actually had a lot of issues. and we would like to try to make sure we provide good starter kits off the bat with less bugs. Um, and in addition to additional tooling about things like um, a, a GUI interface to run uh, matches. I know not everyone's uh, comfortable with the CLI or um, better um, visualization and annotation tools such as custom annotations. Um, people who have competed in scripts might really uh, be attuned to what those look, kind of look like. So we're working towards the kind of the tooling that uh, competitions like Scripps and Haylight had um, and trying to add it to our competition. Um, and lastly, as per our model, we'll be moving on from season one almost completely um, into creating a new game design from scratch. Uh, you can expect to see a new theme, um, new mechanics, of which I'm really excited to share about these new mechanics. I think these are things that I haven't seen Arl ever really touch before. Um, so really excited to share that. Unfortunately, we can't share that until the open beta, which is another thing we're considering. Uh, next season, we're going to have a kind of open beta where we're going to have one month. Um, anyone can compete, um, and there's just going to be a flurry of changes on our side to balance things out. And then the three months after that will be the official competition timeline. Um, but these are some of the main points of season two. There's actually going to be a lot of other things that we're going to slowly kind of reveal what we're doing in season two. But we're super excited to um, present season two to you guys next year um, and looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys make of it next year. Uh, thank you for competing. Um, and yeah, um, have a uh, good rest of the winter break. <laughs>